My dearly beloved in Christ, today's gospel for the 13th Sunday after Pentecost tells us that wonderful story of the cure of ten lepers and how only one of them returned to our Lord to give him thanks. And note how our Lord cured them. They cried out from a distance because the lepers were not permitted to approach people closely. They had to stay at a distance so as not to contaminate others. And they cried out, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And our Lord tested their faith because his only reply to this request for a cure was, go, show yourselves to the priests. Now, our Lord did that because the Mosaic law, the law of the Old Testament, was that if a leper were cured, he had to go to the priest to obtain a ratification that he was indeed cured and was now allowed to live within the villages and no longer an outcast. So our Lord did not cure them right away. He said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they were on their way, they were cured. We could take these words of our Lord, go show yourselves to the priests, and apply it to our practice of going to confession. Because leprosy is compared by the fathers of the church to the disease of sin. It, leprosy was a disease that covered the body with <clears throat> ugly sores. And our soul, as it is beheld by God, when it is loaded with sins, is loathsome and repugnant as was the condition of a leper. So here we are with the leprosy of sin, and what does our Lord say to us? Go show yourselves to the priests. And we do that in confession. Now, there is this difference that the lepers went to the priests not to be cured, but to obtain a certification of their cure. Whereas we go to a priest in confession to obtain the cure of our maladies, of our spiritual diseases. Of course, Protestants have a real problem with this. One of the few sticking points for those who find themselves attracted to the Catholic religion, but find certain obstacles, such as our devotion to saints, our use of statues and representatives of our Lord and our Blessed Mother, indulgences, the papacy, a few sticking points, and confession is certainly one of them that Protestants find very hard to accept because they will say, well, why can't I tell God that I'm sorry for my sins and be forgiven? Why do I have to go to a man? Something they often will say. Why do I have to go to a man to be forgiven? And we would reply that, first of all, it's because that is what God requires. Our Lord said to the apostles, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven, etc. But also we reflect that the priest takes the place of Christ. So it's not really going to a man in the sense of just any man, but it is going to a man who has been ordained and thereby given the power of the priesthood and is truly another Christ. St. Alphonsus, in his wonderful book on the dignity and duties of the priesthood, talks about how the priest is above all kings of the earth and even above the angels of heaven. And his dignity, he even goes on to say, is above that of our Blessed Mother. To quote from St. Alphonsus, Besides, the power of the priest surpasses that of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For although this Divine Mother can pray for us and by her prayers obtain whatever she wishes, Yet she cannot absolve a Christian from even the smallest sin. The Blessed Virgin was eminently more perfect than the apostles, says Pope Innocent III. It was, however, not to her, but only to the apostles, that the Lord entrusted the keys of the kingdom of heaven. St. Bernard of, Bernardine of Siena has written, Holy Virgin, excuse me, for I speak not against thee, 
The Lord has raised the priesthood above thee. The saint assigns the reason of the superiority of the priesthood over Mary, that she conceived Jesus Christ only once, but by consecrating the Eucharist, the priest, as it were, conceives him as often as he wishes. So that if the person of the Redeemer had not as yet been in the world, the priest, by pronouncing the words of consecration, would produce this great person of a man-God. St. Augustine cries out, O wonderful dignity of the priests, in their hands as in the womb of the Blessed Virgin, the Son of God becomes incarnate. Hence, priests are called the parents of Jesus Christ. Such is the title that St. Bernard gives them, for they are the active cause by which he is made to exist really in the consecrated host. Thus, the priest may in a certain manner be called the creator of his creator, since by saying the words of consecration, he creates, as it were, Jesus in the sacrament by giving him a sacramental existence. So it is marvelous what the saints say about the dignity of the priesthood. But even though the priest is truly another Christ and has the power of our Lord to change bread and wine into his body and blood and to absolve sins, nevertheless he remains a human being with faults and failings, human deficiencies, and perhaps our Lord instituted the sacrament of penance with priests, invested with his power, because we can feel more comfortable to going to a priest knowing that he is a human being like us and that he has his, again, human deficiencies and so forth. And thus he can have compassion on the sinner who approaches him in confession. And notice that our Lord says, go show yourselves to the priests. And that's what the penitent must do in confession. He must show himself. He must open up, lay bare his soul to the priest. Let us take a minute as we reflect upon this gospel and apply it to the role of priests. Let us reflect upon what the catechism tells us is necessary for a good confession. Five elements. First of all, examination of conscience. Second, confession of sins, contrition, purpose of amendment, and then satisfaction, or performing the penance the priest gives us, the five points for making a good confession. First of all, we begin with an examination of conscience. We think about our sins. What do I have to confess? When was my last confession? Never just rush right into the confessional with little preparation. We should appreciate the excellence of this sacrament of penance and always prepare well. And then we go into the confession and it comes time to confess our sins. And the catechism tells us that a good confession of sins must be humble, sincere, and entire. We confess with humility. We do not lay the blame on someone else for our sins, but we go before our Lord with a humble heart. I am a sinner. Dear God, forgive me. So we confess with humility. Sincerity means we confess our sins as we believe them to be in the eyes of God. We do not try to hide, to to gloss over certain aspects. But we, this does not mean that we go on with all kinds of detail, but it means that we confess our sins as we believe them to be, to appear in the eyes of God. And Entire means at least all mortal sins must be confessed. So the sinner then goes into the confessional, having prepared well, and humbly confesses his sins. And then there are those very important elements which really deserve a separate sermon, contrition for sin and purpose of amendment. So important, so important that we should make the act of contrition before we go into the confessional, at the conclusion of our examination of conscience, thinking about the words, meaning them from our hearts. And then likewise, in the confessional, after confessing our sins, we say the act of contrition, being truly sorry for our sins and being resolved not to commit them again. And then finally, we humbly receive the penance 
that the priest gives us, and we are careful to perform it as soon as we can afterwards to make satisfaction for our sins. Let us be grateful for this wonderful sacrament. Never look upon confession as a burden, but rather look upon it as what it is, a cure for our maladies. Just as these lepers were cured of that terrible disease of leprosy, so our Lord tells us to show ourselves to the priest, to go to the priest in the confessional and receive this divine sacrament, which not only grants us the forgiveness of sins, but grants us the sacramental grace to make progress spiritually, to overcome temptation. One of the best things for a person who is having a difficulty in the spiritual life, is to go to confession often to receive the sacramental graces. And how foolish we would be if we say, well, I I can't think of anything really to confess, and we put off our confession. We can always confess our past sins. We can always express our sorrow for all the sins of our life. Because the sacrament, again, gives us sacramental graces to make progress to overcome the leprosy of sin and to grow closer to Almighty God. So let us appreciate this sacrament. Let us make use of it. And let us give thanks to God that he has given us this remedy, which we ought to treasure as Catholics, the opportunity of confession to obtain the forgiveness of our sins and to obtain those wonderful sacramental graces that help us to love and serve God better. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.